In this video, I'm going to teach you how to checkmate with bishop and knight against the king. This is a slightly harder checkmate, so I only recommend you learn this if you are an intermediate level player. Even though you're almost never going to get this sort of endgame over the board, I still recommend you learn because it teaches you coordination between pieces and visualization of the squares they control, which is very important for overall chess. So let's take a look at this position. This is the final checkmating pattern. Uh, the green circles are squares controlled by white, and the blue circles are the only squares that black can move into. So he's stuck in the blue squares. Also notice that the corner here that he's stuck in is the same color square as the bishop. The only way to force checkmate black is to bring him into the same color corner as the bishop. All right. In this case, white will just have to bring the knight in over here to control the final square, and then the bishop can checkmate. So let's take a look at that. All right, now a little bit careful because if we bring the knight in now, it's actually stalemate because black's king is not in check. So we have to play over here just a waiting move, keeping control over the square. And once black moves back, we can check and then finally checkmate. Okay, so that was simple and all, but how do we get black into this corner? That's the question. Well, one of the most common ways is for black to be in the opposite color corner, and then we can memorize a sort of four sequence of moves, or really pattern, a couple, two, like two patterns, which is not very difficult, to force him into this opposite corner right here. So let's take a look at how we do that. First of all, black's king is in the wrong color corner, so it's a light square on a dark square bishop. And the bishop will end up controlling one of these diagonals over here to stop him from going there. And the knight will control the actual corner square. The knight's the only one that actually can control this light square corner. So let's start with, say, bishop e3, controlling one square here and then the knight controls the corner square. Also notice that the king is um, like two squares diagonal from the corner, that's the perfect position. Okay, so once the knight controls that square, black's king has to move up, and now the bishop can come in and control this square. And also, this is a very common pattern that you'll see throughout this checkmate, is the knight controls one square here, and then forces the king right, and then the bishop comes in and controls the next square, and then the knight will control this square, and so on. So let's take a look. Black's king moves up, and now this is the move that will be very important to remember, knight to d5, which is sort of backwards and a little bit one square diagonal from white's king. Okay, so this is the move you'll have to remember, and now let's take a look at the first case pattern. Now here black has two options, so let's take a look at the first case pattern. The first case is um, when the black's king well has two options. He can either try to run away into the open, or he can try to stay back in as close as possible to this wrong color corner. So the first case is where he tries to stay back as, as much as possible. So he plays king c8, and then we play knight e7 check. And now notice that the bishop controls this square, and knight controls the next square instead of the corner controls this one. All right, this forces the king to go this way, and then when we defend the knight with our king, it forms this sort of L pattern. And this is another pattern that's very useful to remember. The knight sits on the same color square as the bishop, which controls the opposite color square. And the knight's really the only one who can keep controlling these opposite color squares. So this is a very important pattern to remember. Okay, and now black moves up, this is the only move. He's trying to escape this way, so we come over with the king. And notice that the green squares we already control, and the blue squares are left open, or these squares are left open for him to run, but luckily the bishop will be able to control them if needed. So he moves here, trying to escape, but white puts the bishop in, and checks him. So now he left this square, and is controlling this square. So we're moving one square at a time. Black is forced to go here. Now, this is actually the exact same pattern 
is when we had this knight over here controlling this square and this bishop controlling this square, but it just shifted to the right. So we're succeeding in our pattern. And once again, moving the knight backwards, one square diagonal from our king, and this will continue to push black's king this way. Notice that the knight has, is going to be following this sort of zigzag pattern, which forms a W, which is why this is called a W maneuver of the knight, just going back and forth, controlling every different square from the bishop, forcing the king that way. So he has to move here. And now here we actually just have to waste the move because we want, we want, for example, in this position to give a check and then defend our knight. That was the pattern. So if we, if we just waste the move, he goes back and now we can actually check. And this is the same exact pattern as before. And then we move the king once more. If he ever tries to run, the bishop's got it covered. And now you notice that we're back to the pattern from the beginning where the bishop's controlling this square, the king's controlling the rest, and black's king is confined into a two by two area. So all we need to do is just get the knight to here and it will be check. We gotta waste the move once again, and then it'll be check and then checkmate. So that's the first case, the W maneuver. Once again, when the king tries to stay as close as possible to the wrong color square corner, we can give a check with the knight. Bring the king twice. If he tries to escape, the bishop's got us covered. And then once again, move the knight back. Sometimes waste the tempo because we want the knight here to be with check. All right, also, if black's king tries to run, we, got, we just have to visualize the squares that are already defended. And notice if black, black's king goes over here, we can move here and it will be a box once again. So for example, we just, let's say, take away this square or, or we, could, we could even do this in case he goes back, it's back into the W. And if here he's in a two by two box with a knight, and then we just switch the bishop to control that and then bring the knight over here. All right, so it's very similar. There's, it's, it's a pretty easy case. All right, now let's take a look at the second case over here. We're back into this move. We just played knight d5. And in this case, black will try to run away this way. And there's actually two techniques to catch the king um, when he's trying to run this way. And you can see the table base here. If we play this move, um, there's actually two possibilities which are exactly the same value, like um, distance to mate and 30 half moves. So the way, the way I first learned about this is with this bishop here, and it's a pretty beautiful move, but let's learn the first technique that's possible, which is trying to sort of continue with a W. So we're going to play king here, following his king, and then when he tries to escape, we still sort of continue with a W maneuver with a knight. And now the green squares are squares that we already control by the king and the knight. And the blue squares are sort of the ones that black's king can try to escape into the open. And luckily, all those squares can be covered in one move with the bishop. And especially if the bishop comes here, it creates a, a wall that he cannot escape from. So he plays king g7 trying to escape this way, but we play bishop e3 covering those. Plays king here. And now all we have to do is actually wait a move because next move, black will have to go back and then we can try to take away this square probably. So we just have to waste the move, keeping everything the same. And then we can take away those squares, for example, with the bishop here. And now black has to move to one of these red squares. And now we're back into W maneuver where the knight controls the light squares and the bishop can control the escape. Bishop controls the escape and then pushes the king further. And we're back to the case one pattern. So this is the first sort of pattern that you can use if the king tries to escape. So if the king tries to escape, you can bring your king in and then the knight sort of keeping a W maneuver and then the bishop can control escape squares for the black king. Okay, so now let's go with, over the second technique, which is the one I learned, and I think it's a little bit more 
beautiful and it's less to memorize. Um, so this technique is actually to put the bishop right behind the knight. So it may seem like a weird move, but we're going to get there. So the king tries to escape once again, king f7, and then white plays knight to f4. And now we see the point of the bishop. The bishop, when, when the bishop move here and then the knight move here, it creates a sort of barrier here. The knight controls these squares and the bishop controls this square. The king controls these other ones. And the blue squares are really the only ones, the only way out for the black king. But to get there, he will have to, say, go like this way. And by, by when he reaches here, we can put the bishop here and it will control all the way out, all the squares the black king can, can try to escape from. So black is actually just stuck in a box here. So in this case, we just um, um, the pattern here is to just use your king to sort of push his king all the way into the corner. And we can use, in this case, we cannot move up with a king. If we go here, he runs away over this way. So we just bring our bishop in over here. And now it's an actual wall. Knight controls these. And then the bishop controls these. It's a four, like four in a row wall, sort of. And black skin can never escape this. And now it's just a matter of bringing, bringing the king in. So we can, whenever we need to, we can just waste them over the bishop. This square is controlled, so black has to move away, and then we bring the king in, move the king up. Black's trying to stay back and keep the king out. We just have to waste the move. And then in this case, when black goes here, we can bring the bishop to control the two squares that the king can try to stay back. And when he moves back, we move forward. All right, keeping the area closed. And here we can imagine that black's trying to get to this square, so we can take it away with the bishop. And then we finally bring the king in, and the knight and bishop are still covering the exits. And now we just have to really wait for him to go back because that's the only way he can, that's the only place he can go is backwards. So we just waste the move. And then the bishop comes in, and it's a two by two area once again. We just have to bring the knight to h6, and then, or f8, I mean, and then it's checkmate. So let's recap. When the king tries to escape, you can also alternatively remember only really two moves bishop next to the knight, and if he tries to escape, knight over, creating a four by four, or four sort of in a row wall. And then you can use your king to press his king backwards. And if you, if you ever can't, you either waste the move with the bishop or use the bishop to control important squares. Waste, we wait a move here and then block these and so on. So that's the pattern. And also actually here, there's actually a little bit of a faster move with a knight e6. And then we can bring the king in. It's a little bit faster if you want to remember that. All right, so now there's a, a final case here with a second technique. It's, um, so the king tries to run away into the open, of course. We bring the bishop behind the knight. But now there's a, another move. He can try to sort of switch plans and go back to the corner. And in this case, there's only one little thing you have to remember, and it's bishop next to the knight one more time. And we'll see the point of this move in just a second, because if he goes here, we can actually get back into the W because this bishop is controlling that square for the king. So that was the reason for this bishop move to control that square. And now we're actually literally back into the W maneuver. All right. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, let's see here. And of course, if he tries to run away again, we can, I guess we can still get into W, and if here, we can always move the knight back, and it's still the same box. All right, so now, if, um, if you want, this is it. For a very long time, 
I have just remembered this sort of pattern of chasing the king from one corner to the other and that should be enough to win most games, especially against the computer because the computer usually just runs into the corner automatically. But unfortunately, lately I, it, wasn't, it wasn't enough for me. I kind of wanted a little bit of a more systematic way to understand this endgame and to think about how to f f maybe even force the king into this corner so that then we can force him into the other corner. All right. The first tip I have for you is to bring your king and bishop into the center of the board. So let's start doing that. If the king, if the opposing king tries to shield your king, you can always control some of these squares around him, forcing him to step away, letting your pieces through. All right, king and bishop are in the center. And now take a look at this long diagonal that's the same color square as your bishop. There will be two squares just outside the center, and these squares are gonna be very, very useful for the knights. For example, when we bring the knight here, it makes a little uh, barricade along these red squares, making it very easy for black's king to be trapped in this area of the board over here. The bishop can always come over here to defend this escape path, and your king will be able to shield the opposing king. And also, if black tries to run this way, your bishop will be able to come here, control this diagonal, and then your king will be able to actually control these squares and push your king, push his king towards this corner. So in and in, in other words, the knight controls this area and the king will be able to control this area when the bishop goes here and also this diagonal that the bishop will go on is parallel to the long diagonal and also in this sort of triangle that black's king happens to be in so it could you it could be this way rotated in or reflected so let's take a look at some variations first we got to actually take away this square so we can put our bishop on the correct diagonal and now this area of the board is locked away and our king will always be able to defend this area. So the table base actually gives this as the best move because it likes staying in, in this opposite color corner square. But in this case, we can always, because this part of the area or, or of the board is closed, we can always keep the king towards the corner. And also notice that because the knights are very well placed on these squares, they can hop into the key squares over here to control the corner in two moves. All right, and this is one of our known patterns. All right, let's take a look at some ways that black can, can try to mess with us. So if instead of king here, letting us box him in easily, if he tries to run away, we can simply use our bishop to sort of cut him off, and if he tries to run away, our king will be able to catch him because our bishop is on the correct diagonal. And once we do that, we can bring our knights, we can always bring our knights into the middle for help, and it can always jump back in one move to control these squares if the king ever gets too far. But in this case, if the king moves to the blue, so blue arrow right here, we can use the bishop to actually push him even faster towards the correct corner, skipping this corner altogether. We just have to find a good square for the knights to sort of control some escape squares over here, let's say. And then the bishop, let's say, can control this square, and then you can clearly see it's going to be a, a locked area for black. So black will have to go this way, and then we can use our king, of course, to shield his king away. And also the, the knight in the center is doing a very good job actually also controlling the square, making it a little bit easier. And the knight can always jump back, control that square, and it's the same variation. Okay, so if the king tries to run this way, our king and bishop can catch him. The knight can come in to help, and black's king is getting pushed. All right, now let's go back a little bit more. 
over here instead of king c7 he can try to run away a little bit faster and in this case if he does try to run away we will bring the knight into the center and if he still tries to run away this is a very important pattern to remember it's this bishop to f6 and this square is just happens to be um, two diagonals away from the correct colors corner so this only really happens if the king actually kind of runs towards the correct corner this is one way to box him in because this diagonal is blocked and if the king tries to escape on any of these squares the our king will be able to block him so for example our king's blocking his escape our knight can always block this escape and he's basically in a box and after the king here there's a nice move bishop g5 check prevents him from going here because of checkmate and when when the king runs away we bring our knight in and of course it's a it's a box after some moves there's a two by two area and it's an easy win so we bring our knight in and he can't really go outside because our bishop will be able to block his escape so he has to really go back and then we can do the same pattern of the bishop on this diagonal our king catches him and then our bishop can control some of, some more of these squares if black goes to the red uh, white will go to the blue and box him in even further so he has to go this way and our, our king is shielding his king and of course our knight can always come back if needed okay those are pretty much the patterns now let's try to put them into practice I'm gonna play some practice games against the computer so the first step is to just bring my king and bishop into the middle so I'm gonna just do that take his take squares away from him all right Okay, I'm gonna bring my knight in, bring my king in the middle. Okay, he's in, uh, okay, so this is the long diagonal and he's in this sort of triangle. So I'm gonna try to get my king closer over here. And the knight actually belongs really on this square, which is right next to the bishop. So I'm just gonna bring it here, bring my king in. He could go here actually, but okay. Let me just put my knight on the correct square. And then I can use my king to shield his king away. Of course, this would have been stalemate last move, so this is the correct placement for the king. And now I just have to bring uh, my knights to control this square, so I can just do this. And now we're in one of our patterns. He's trying to run away. I'm going to use the bring the bishop back technique he's still trying to run away so we create a barricade here and of course these squares can be taken away from uh, with our king i can always waste some moves and i can put my bishop here to take away those squares and then bring my king up the knight and bishop always have this wall over here can bring my knight in now there's a two by two area i just have to bring my knight here but it was check so let me waste a move and it's a very easy win let's try again different position i'm going to try to bring my king in and over here black can maybe try to trap my knight so i'm going to just get it out of the way put it on a safe square the entire center is actually controlled, so I'm just going to bring my pieces in. Okay. All my pieces are in the center. He's trying to stay close to the wrong color square uh, corner. All right, so now let's take a look over here. I think I want to switch my king and bishop actually because I want I just want to take away this square so I'm going to play a move here okay so now the knight's controlling this area 
I'm gonna bring my bishop on this diagonal and the king should be able to control the other area. So I'm just gonna stop here. If he would have gone here, I could have always just controlled all the squares of my king. Okay, this area is still covered. If you would have gone here, I would have played bishop here to take away that square and push him towards the edge. But in this case, it's very simple. If you would have gone here, I would have been able to just move my knight, and I, now I can still move my knight. Okay, I can choose the square. I can, I think this one, because I can bring my bishop here. Any of them would have worked. Now it's just the same pattern, just ro rotated. So he's trying to run away. I'm gonna bring my bishop next to the knight. Okay, he's trying to switch plans and come back, so I have to bring my bishop next to the knight again. Control this square, and now we're back into the W maneuver. W maneuver. This bishop always controls the escape square. All right, back into the W. Bishop controls this. All right, this is a two by two area. All I gotta do is bring my knight here. Just with check. And now I can checkmate. Thank you for watching.